Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone joining us on Facebook. This is the sixth Sunday after Pentecost, and to all our American watchers, happy Fourth of July. Our services, our service today is a service of morning prayer, and we are welcoming Paula this morning to share her reflections on the gospel and to proclaim the gospel. I guess the biggest news this week is, is and the most uh, important to me, is that I'm going on vacation. <laughs> uh, I will be attending the National Annual Ken and Lutheran Worship Conference uh, online this Tuesday and Wednesday, and then I begin two weeks off on Thursday. Our Sunday services will continue to be live streamed and then uploaded to YouTube. We've got uh, Paula taking care of the presiding and and preaching again next week, and then Norma Wheeler's going to lead us in a service of morning prayer the following Sunday and preach. Jack will be here Monday to Thursday to lead morning prayer, and I guess he'll uh, tape this to his face so that <laughs> our uh, audio will be audible. <laughs> Between July 8th and 24th, if you in the parish experience any pastoral emergencies, please contact uh, my colleague, our neighboring priest, the Reverend Terry Glennon. She's agreed to uh, cover while I'm away. Um, her contact information is in the handout, and I'll probably include it again in the email I send out this afternoon. This Wednesday, the first Wednesday in July and uh, beginning at 7.30, we'll be live streaming a uh, service of Compline, a late evening prayer service. We have permission at this point to have up to 10 people in the church. Compline involves everyone sharing in the prayers and if you'd like to come, please contact Paula. We're not doing any online sign-up, but if you contact Paula and, you, and she keeps track of how many we have um, Wednesday night, that would be, uh, we'll keep it under the number that we're allowed. Now, between the mask and the glasses and the, I'm gonna, You'll have to excuse me if I knock the mic off. Our service will begin with this land acknowledgement. The earth is the Lord's and all its fullness, the world and those who dwell within. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. O God, our creator, we acknowledge the Algonquin peoples as the first stewards of this land. Help of all who call this land home to honor their legacy and to work for the peace of your kingdom. Now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbors. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son Jesus Christ has taught us that what we do for the least of your children, we do also for him. Give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all who gave up his life and died for us, but lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
The first reading is from the second book of Samuel. Then all the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and, and said, Look, we are your bones and flesh. For some time while Saul was king over us, it was you who led Israel and brought it in. The Lord said to you, It is you who shall, sh shall be the shepherd of my people, Israel. You shall, reign, you shall be ruler of Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king at Hebron, and King David made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord. And they anointed David king over Israel. David was 30 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned for 40 years. At Hebron he reigned over Judea seven years and six months. And at Jerusalem he reigned all Israel and Judea 33 years. David occupied the stronghold and named the city of David. David built the city from all, from all around for Milo inward. And David became greater and greater, for the Lord, the God of hosts, was with him. The word of the Lord. And it's be to God. Our appointed psalm this morning is Psalm 48. It's printed in the handout. I'll read to the asterisk. Yes. And if you would conclude each verse, we'll read the psalm. Great is the Lord, and highly to be praised. In the city of our God is his holy hill. Beautiful and lofty, the joy of all the earth is the hill of Zion. The very center of the world and the city of the great king. God is in her citadels. He is known to be her sure refuge. Behold, the kings of the earth assembled and marched forward together. They looked and were astounded. They retreated and fled in terror. Trembling seized them there. They arrived like a woman in childbirth, like ships of the sea when the east wind shatters them. As we have heard, so have we seen in the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God. God, God has established her forever. We have waited in silence on your loving kindness, O God. In, in the, the midst, midst of, of your, your temple. temple. Your praise, like your name, O God, reaches to the world's end. Your, your right hand is full of justice. justice. Let Mount Zion be glad, and the cities of Judah rejoice. Because of your judgments. Make the circuit of Zion. Walk round about her. Count the number of her towers. Consider well her bulwarks. Examine her strongholds. That you, that you may tell those who come after. This God is our God forever and ever. He, he shall be our God forever. Now let us pray. Gracious God, you have made us fellow citizens with the saints in the city of your eternal light. In the time of storm, when the foundations shake, teach us to wait in silence on your steadfast and transforming love, made known to us in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 2 to 10. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told, that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast except of my weakness. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth, but I refrain from it. 
so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me. Even considering the exceptional character of the revelations, therefore to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Jesus left that place and came to his hometown. And his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom? that has been given to him. What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this carpenter, son of Mary, and brother of James and Joseph, and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor except in their home and among their own kin, and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them, and he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went out among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two, and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics, he said to them. Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick, and they cured them. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, my words and speak through them. Take our thoughts and think through them. Take our hearts and set them on fire with love for you through the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. When I studied this gospel, I thought the scripture was saying, those who will listen to Jesus' message and have faith will receive Christ's salvation. This gospel reading from Mark 6, 1 to 13 occurs just after the healing of a woman with the hemorrhage and the raising of Jairus' daughter from the dead. It is two different stories about faith, and that's where the similarity ends. Unlike the two miracles that we heard about in last week's gospel about faith, 
which demonstrated faith in Jesus. The first parable we heard in this passage is about lack of faith. Many years ago, there was a saying that went like this. Children should be seen and not heard. At that time, children were not allowed to speak freely and certainly not shout when adults were present. Children were expected to stay very, very quiet, especially when their guests were in the house. Did this mean that, that we did not trust or have faith in our children? Thankfully, times have changed, and adults now encourage children to share in conversations, and they try to listen very carefully to what children say and learn from them. I have told my children since they were very young that I have learned so much from them. Children are very smart, and if we listen, we learn a lot from them. All of us have experienced times when we have difficulty getting others to listen to us. You have tried to talk to family members when the television is on or the radio, and they are unable to hear you. Or perhaps they are busy concentrating on a task and aren't aware that you're talking. It does not feel good to be ignored. In the Bible, we learn the same thing happened to Jesus. He went with his disciples to his hometown, and while he was there, People did not respect him or believe what he said, even though he had performed miracles. When Jesus went to his hometown, Nazareth, his, his disciples came with him. Jesus went to the synagogue and began to teach. The people started to talk among themselves. How did he get his power and wisdom? Why can't he do such miracles? Isn't he a carpenter's son? We know his brothers and sisters. People were angry and wouldn't listen to Jesus. Maybe they were jealous that someone they knew had power they didn't have. Sometimes your family and friends don't always think that you are doing is important or special, and they do not listen to what you have to say. Jesus was surprised that they wouldn't listen to him. Jesus was teaching effectively and wisely, but the people of his hometown saw him only as a carpenter. They rejected his authority because he was one of their peers. We must never let prejudice blind us from the truth, but as we learn more about Jesus, we must see him for who he really is, not like his hometown people. Jesus couldn't do his miracles because there because of the people's pride and unbelief. The miracles that Jesus did had little effect on the people because they did not accept his message or believe that he was God. So he sent his disciples out to share God's message in other places. Jesus was surprised by the unbelief of the crowd, and not because he was expecting to be welcomed as a hometown hero. The lack of faith always caused Jesus to be amazed because he is all-knowing, almighty, all-present, and all-loving. Why would someone not trust him? If you consider the population of Nazareth at the time of Jesus, you can understand why he was not accepted. For starters, most of them, most of the people were poorly educated. If they had any, edu any education at all, they could not read the precious scrolls in the synagogue. So, they, so the only way they could learn their religious heritage was to listen to the rabbis who were educated. Jesus did not have the formal training required for rabbis. So in the eyes of the people, he was just a local boy who was putting on airs. To make matters worse, the scribes in Jerusalem had been spreading rumors about Jesus, rumors which had also reached Nazareth. For example, in Mark 3.23, Jesus was accused of working with the devil. Further to the story of Jesus, a son was expected to follow in his father's footsteps not go beyond them. If a boy's father was a carpenter, then the son was to be a carpenter as well, but nothing more. When the people heard Jesus teach in the synagogue, they were on the verge of applauding him, but they didn't because they saw him just as a carpenter. When they failed to see that Jesus was following, was following in his father's footsteps, his heavenly father's footsteps. Jesus really upset them when he told them to take outsiders to see what the locals refused to see. 
in this area, we are the same. For example, how many of the local businesses here were started or purchased by people who came from far away? So why couldn't Jesus perform many miracles in Nazareth? It was because of the lack of faith. We know that unbelievers believers like the people of Nazareth often fail to tap into God's power. If they had put faith in Jesus' wisdom, they would have heard God's guidance and encouragement. If they had looked deeper into Jesus' cure, cures, they would have seen God reaching out to rescue them. Instead, they missed one of the great miracles of all. Sometimes we are like the people of Jesus' hometown. We forget that God has all the power. We don't always trust God to guide us. We don't admit that we need healing and changes in the ways we have been doing things. God wants us to stop worrying about our pride, forget old hurts and disagreements, and be open to new ideas. God can use the challenges the church may face to help us understand that we should really rely on God's power and trust in His grace. When we trust in God's power, amazing things can happen. And God can work through us to do things that none of us can do alone. Jesus took this rejects, rejection in stride and continued his ministry by sending out the 12 disciples. He sent them out with only the barest of essentials, <clears throat> one cloak and a staff. He wanted them to trust God to provide for their needs. They were to concentrate on their mission. Plus, Jewish custom at that time was to offer hospitality to travelers. Jesus wanted the disciples to stay at the first house that offered them a place to stay in each city or town that they visited, rather than moving from house to house. <clears throat> Jesus sent the 12 disciples out in pairs. He had three main reasons. First, the partner provides strength, protection, and companionship. Second, a partner also provides credibility. Also, a partner holds people accountable. A person is less likely to succumb to temptation when accompanied by a partner. Jesus wanted the disciples to know that they would travel the open roads of, pa roads of Palestine penniless and expecting to be welcomed with, and, uh, welcomed with open arms, especially in their hometown. He also wanted them to know that the gospel message was a hard one to preach and a hard one to hear. Not popular, not easy and not automatically earning respect, especially at home. Those who refuse to show proper hospitality or those who refuse to listen to the disciples' message were to be treated as pagans. As such, the disciples were to do what the Jews did after they walked through Gentile lands, namely, shake the dust off their feet as they left. Not only did this warn the offenders, it freed the disciples to move to more fertile territory just like Jesus did after the people of Nazareth rejected him. Jesus and his disciples always challenged the status quo. They always spoke the truth with boldness and courage. So the disciples went out and told those who would listen about the good news of God's love. And this is good advice for all of us, children and adults, that we share the good news of God's love with those who will listen. As we look at this message, we see the apostles anoint the sick with oil. This is how they applied medicine. The olive oil they used had medicinal qualities and proper medicine was all but non-existent. The people who came to the apostles were in agony and the apostles did what they could to alleviate that pain as they preached the gospel. These actions reflected the love of Christ. You see, Christ is not only concerned with our spiritual well-being, he is interested in our physical well-being also. Christ does not merely sympathize with our pain, he empathizes with us. He even weeps with us because he loves and he cares for us so much. Also, as I reflected on this scripture about Jesus sending out his disciples to teach his message to every, everyone, I thought about what he said about all of his disciples. He said, what marks his true disciples is that we love one another. 
that is an instruction that means exactly the same thing today as in Jesus' time when it was first given to us by him. May it not be great if we keep this instruction from Jesus our utmost attention. The Lord loves us, cares for us immensely. Not only that, but he's concerned for our total well-being also. When the apostles ministered to the physical needs of the people and they preached to their spiritual needs, they reflected the love of Christ. Jesus loves us. He told us to love each other as he loves us. We, may we never lose sight of his love and always love others as he has commanded us. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Please help us to remember that you have the power and the grace to help us when we trust in your love and grace. Amen. Amen. invited to be out of town this weekend and so Paula was going to lead the service and pray and preach and uh, when it got cancelled the event I was going to take care of when it got uh, cancelled I said I wanted to be here and if Paula had already begun her research I would be happy to hear her pray or to hear her preach and I'd just like to reiterate, we have relied on God's power and guidance. We invite God to heal us, to change us, to work through us as a community. We as disciples of God have demonstrated love for each other and for our neighborhood and I pray that that continues. Lord, thank you for your love for us. Thank you for your concern for us. Thank you for keeping us together through the next few months as we continue to worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, or sorry, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
This morning in our intercessory prayers, we'll be using the litany number three, which is on page 112 of the BAS, if you want to grab your book to follow along. And this morning, I want to pray for all the children who never came home. Spirit of God, Lord and giver of life, moving between us and around, like wind or water or fire. Breathe into us your freshness that we may awake. Cleanse our vision that we may see more clearly. Kindle our senses that we may feel more sharply. And give us the courage to live as you would have us live through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us offer our prayers to the source of all love and all life, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. On this sixth Sunday after Pentecost, in the Anglican Church of Canada, we pray for the Right Reverend David Greenwood, Bishop, and the clergy and people of the Diocese of Athabasca. We pray for the Lutheran Church in Canada and for the congregations of the southern area of the Saskatchewan Synod. Lord, hear our prayer. In the Anglican Diocese prayer calendar, we encourage each praying community within our diocese to pray for this list every Sunday throughout the year as part of the regular intentions. Lord, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. In our weekly prayer cycle, we pray for Good Shepherd Anglican Lutheran Church and all our ministries and for our local neighboring churches. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. We continue to pray for all those in our parish. And today we pray for Rosemary, Caroline, Stephen, Connie, and Graham. Bless them, Father. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, we pray for all who call themselves Christians, that we may become a royal priesthood, a holy nation, to the praise of Christ Jesus our Savior. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Shane our Bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers, that they may remain faithful to their calling, and rightly proclaim the word of truth. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray for Elizabeth, our Queen, for the leaders of the nations, and especially all the leaders of our country and our province and our city. We pray for all in authority, that your people may lead quiet and peaceable lives. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for this city of Ottawa, this beautiful city and suburb of Bar Haven that we are so blessed to live in. And we pray for all who live here, the poor and the rich, the elderly and the young, men and women, that you will show your goodwill to all. And we pray for all those who have requested our prayers. Let's take a moment to either silently or aloud Pray for those on our own hearts. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the victims of our society, and especially for the children of the residential schools and those of them who never returned, for the families who mourned and never forgot them. Help us all to face the past and change our future. We pray for those who minister to the victims of our society, that you will be their help and defense, and use our hands as well, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those preparing for baptism and for those recently baptized, that they may be strengthened in the faith. Lord, we give thanks for all the saints who have found favor in your sight from the earliest of times, prophets, apostles, martyrs, and those whose names are known to you alone. 
And we pray that we too may be counted among your faithful witnesses. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the 
peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, go out and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.